Hey everyone and welcome to the Kiki London YouTube channel. My name's Amanda and in today's video we have a new launch. So today Kiki London launched their new pro range brush set and I'm super excited to show you all. And here they are. They are absolutely gorgeous. So as you can see, there is five new nail art brushes in this collection. They come packaged in these tubes, so they do arrive nice and safe. I'm going to jump off camera to unpackage them just so we can jump straight in to looking at the actual brushes. First of all, let's take a look at the exterior of these brushes. They have a really professional look to them. They've got a matte black finish with your Kiki London logo and each brush tells you which one it is. They really feel comfortable to hold. They're not too heavy. They've got quite a lightweight feel to them and they all come with a lid, which I personally always prefer a lidded nail art brush because they're a lot easier to keep clean. So as I said, there's five brushes in the collection. We have a 01 round, a 01 angled, a 01 ombre, a 01 stripe liner. This one, by the way, is my favorite and a 01 detail brush. And another thing I wanted to mention is that all of the bristles for these brushes are made from synthetic fibers. Therefore, they are all vegan friendly. Now that we've looked at the exterior, let's look at the most important part, the brush itself. So we're going to start off by looking at the 01 round brush. Now this one is a ultra flat brush with a rounded tip. This is perfect for applying your gel polish or your gel enhancements. I also love to use a flat brush for a lot of nail art as well. If, for example, I'm doing a marble, I'll use my round brush because I wouldn't want to contaminate my bottle brush. They also come in handy if you're painting on a large surface, but again, don't want to use your bottle brush. They are perfect for going around the cuticle line and getting a nice neat cuticle area, as well as perfecting your French smile lines. I will try and have a video up soon showing you guys how I use one of these to perfect a French nail. But that's our classic 01 round brush. You will find that you get a lot of use out of this brush. It just ends up one of those brushes you end up reaching for a lot, if that makes sense. And as you can see here, it is super flat, which makes it really easy to use. Always be really careful when you're popping your brushes back in their lids that you don't damage any of the bristles. Next up, we have the 01 angled brush. Now this brush again, like the round brush is ultra flat, except for it has the angled top. Now this is perfect if you do a lot of one stroke, you can create your one stroke flowers and designs using an angled brush like this. I personally don't do too much one stroke. It's definitely something I want to practice more this year. But what I like my angled brush for is cleaning up around that cuticle area. So you can dip this in a tiny amount of alcohol alcohol and just neaten up your cuticle line if you get any on the skin because it's angled it always comes across slightly stiffer due to the way the bristles are sloped so it's perfect for going around that cuticle area you'll probably as well find you reach for this for different nail art designs as well now this next brush I have been super excited for. This is the 01 Ombre brush. And as the name suggests, it's designed for creating your flawless smooth ombres. If you take a look at the top of the brush, you will see it has two multi-level types of bristles. You've got some firmer, denser ones down at the base of the brush. And then you've got your soft, more flexible ones at the top of the brush, and they're slightly finer as well. These are the ones that you will use for creating your ombres. You'll blend between your two or three colors, and it will just do all of the work for you and create a flawless ombre. Again, this is another video I will have coming up soon on the YouTube channel because I'm so excited. Now I have the ombre brush to share some ombre gel polish designs with you all. Now at first when you get your new brushes, the bristles may feel a little bit stiff. You can just gently run them across your fingertip to loosen them up a little bit, but they will soften once you start working with your gel polish. 
Now this next brush, I was absolutely blown away by. This is the 01 Stripe Liner Brush. And when I used this, I was genuinely shocked at how much of a thin, crisp line I created. I'm not the best at freehand nail art, but this definitely made it a lot easier for me. As you can see, it has ultra fine, long bristles. These ones are 12 millimeters in length. And this is just going to end up being one of those go-to nail art brushes due to how fine those bristles are. You're going to be able to use it for a multitude of different nail art designs as well as creating those super sharp lines. Once we have finished taking a look at the brushes, I've done a design. So you will actually see this brush and two of the other brushes in use. So make sure you stick around for that. Again, always being careful when you're popping your brushes back into the lids. Now, lastly, I have as a 01 detail brush, and this is the finest brush in the collection. I can tell this one is probably going to be the most popular because if you already do any nail art, you will know how much you reach for a detailer brush. As you can see, it's got super short, compact bristles, which are around five millimeters in length. And that's what makes it perfect for those intricate nail art designs. Because it's so short in length, you're able to really work your gel polish product on the nail and have full control over it. And as well as your intricate designs, I find I use my detailer brush for all sorts. So my hearts, my stars, the flowers, I reach for my detailer brush the most. And again, further along in the video, you will see how I use this brush. And I will also talk you through how I keep my brushes clean as well, because obviously that's very important if you purchase a new set of brushes. Now, as I said, these brushes launch today. So they are now up on the website, which will be linked in the description box below. So grab a set whilst you can. They went up for an absolutely amazing price. So definitely head on over to the website and check them out. I have a pop them all side by side here so you can compare them against each other and see how they all compare. And you definitely need all of these in your collection because they all do different jobs and you will find that you get a lot of use out of every single one. Now these really are a wonderful professional set of nail brushes, but to really show you them, we need to do a design. So I'm gonna come and show you guys a abstract nail art design using a couple of the brushes. Onto our design and the base color that I'm going to be using is O Vanilla. I absolutely love this color. It's a classic creamy nude shade. It's got a bit of a peach undertone to it. So I feel like it made a nice base for this time of year. I always find January nails a little tricky to do because it feels a little too early for Valentine's Day. But also we've just had Christmas and winter nails and we're a bit bored of those. So that's when I usually always reach for my abstract designs. And that's what I decided I would do today because abstract designs are also a way for me to show you a couple of the different brushes. So I'm going to come in and apply that second coat of color, keeping both of the coats of color nice and thin. And then we're going to cure that again for 30 seconds. And then we're going to need some colors for our design. So the first color I'm going to be using is Pool Party. This is a gorgeous teal blue shade. And I'm just going to pop some of this down on a nail art palette. I love this color and it teamed really well with the O Vanilla. It kind of had a bit of a summer vibe to it, to be honest, but I really liked how it turned out. So to apply this color, I'm going to start off by using the round brush. Now, what I love about this brush is because it's so flat, you're able to apply a bit of pressure and create the shape that you're wanting to create without too much product on the brush, if that makes sense. If you try to do this with your bottle brush, you might find that you end up with too much product on the nail and it can end up looking a bit bulky when you're doing nail art if your layers are too thick. So by using the round brush, I was able to apply pressure and get a nice thin coat of color. Now, because we're going for an abstract design, the first part I want to do is the uneven wavy sort of part of the design so I've just drawn on two random patches with the pool party and I've kept those nice and thin because we're going to come in and cure it and then do a second coat so again I'm going to use that round brush I'm letting it fan out I'm applying a little bit of pressure so I can match up and get a nice neat line with that first coat of color that I applied 
keeping the second coat of colour nice and thin. The Kiki London colours are nice and pigmented, but I want them to really pop. So that's why I'm coming in with the second coat of colour. Now I really like to load up my brush, but then make sure to wipe off the excess. So if you ever see me going in and out of the gel polish a few times, it's because I'm allowing that product to really load through my bristles, but I also don't wanna to have too much on there that I've not got control of the product. So I pop that second coat of color into cure for 30 seconds. And whilst that's curing, I'm just gonna show you how I clean up my brush. So when you're switching between colors, like I might come in with this brush again further along in the design, I'm just going to wipe off the excess color on a dry lint-free pad. That's because I know I'm using this brush further along and I don't want to keep using alcohol on my brush to clean it because it will dry it out. And wiping it on that dry lint-free pad will be sufficient enough. So I haven't got any alcohol or anything on that lint-free pad at the moment. Now, next up, I'm going to be using pink tint. I wanted a color that was slightly transparent with a little bit of sparkle. So I had a little look through my colors and I found this one and I thought, wow, this will be perfect for the design. And I'm going to be using that amazing stripe liner brush for this part. So when we applied the blue color, we went for a messy wavy shape. I want a nice crisp square shape this time. So I'm taking that stripe liner brush, loading the bristles up, running off the excess, and then I'm mapping out a square shape. So I'm doing this quite lightly, just painting on a rough shape to begin with. And then once I'm happy with it, I'll just come over to add a bit more product. And because this is a slightly sheer color, I love how it will give off a different effect over the pool party. And you'll still see some of that blue from the pool party showing through. So now that I've drew out the edges of my square shape, I'm gonna come in and fill that in with the round tip brush. Now this just makes it a lot quicker. You could use the stripe liner brush, but you'll be there a while. By having this brush to hand, you're able to fill that section in effortlessly. Again, because it's nice and thin and flat, you're able to get a nice thin, neat application. And then before curing, I'm gonna come back in with that stripe liner brush and just neaten up the square. And then again, I do wanna come in and apply a second coat of color to really help make that pop. So I'm gonna use my stripe liner brush, come straight down and I'm letting the brush do all of the work. As you can see, I'm barely moving the nail and I'm barely moving my hand. I'm just letting the brush do the work for me. I'm applying minimal pressure here because I want quite a thin line. If you did want a thicker line, you just apply more pressure. But that's definitely something to play around and have a practice with. It's great to learn all the things that you can do with your brushes. Then I'm just going to fill that section in again and pop that in to cure. Now off camera, I did do another square up in the top left hand corner. I did it off camera because it was exactly the same as the previous one. And I wanted to move on to showing you guys the leaves. Now for the leaves, I'm going to be using Kiki London Blackheart. I absolutely love this gel polish. For a black gel polish, it is super, super pigmented. So I've applied some of that to my palette. And I'm going to take the stripe liner brush and this part of the video I'm also going to be using that 01 detail brush. So I'm going to use the liner brush for my stem and the detail brush for my leaves. I'm taking my liner brush and really running it through that gel polish because I want to make sure I've got enough on my bristles but I don't want to have loads of excess because I want to create quite a thin line. Then I like to map out and think roughly where I'm placing this line down before I make contact with the nail and my brush. So that's just what I'm doing there. Then I'm placing that brush down and look how effortless it was to draw a super thin line. I was genuinely really shocked at this point because I've never been able to get a line as thin and neat as that. So I popped it straight into Cure because I didn't want to smudge or ruin it. So I'm just popping it into Cure for 30 seconds and I'm then going to come on and paint my leaves. So I've switched to the detailer brush for this because they're a little bit more smaller and intricate. I've loaded up my brush exactly the same as I did the liner brush and then I'm going to start by drawing the leaf at the top of the stem and the leaves are really simple they're just two curved lines that meet in the middle and then I just fill it in with a bit of color I'm going to do a mix of some bigger ones and some smaller ones 
just until I'm happy that they all go down towards that stem area. Now, if you're not very confident, you can cure each leaf as you go along. And then that way, if you make a mistake, you can rub it off. But I felt as though I would be okay at this point to just do all of the leaves in one go. But having that stem cured, it does mean if you make a mistake doing your leaves, you're able to wipe them off with some alcohol and then your stem's still going to be there because you've created that perfect crisp line. You don't want to ruin that by rubbing it away with alcohol if you make a mistake with your leaves. So whenever you're doing quite intricate nail art, it's really good to cure each step as you go along just in case you do make any mistakes or if you accidentally smudge it or anything like that. But as you can see, these leaves are pretty simple. I don't want to have too much paint on my brush or polish, sorry. So that's why you can see I rub a lot of it off on the palette at times. And then I love how pigmented the black gel polish is. I've always used this black gel polish for my nail art. So even if I do an acrylic set of nails and I want to have some black nail art, I've always reached for my Kiki London gel polish because of how pigmented it is. And I was really pleased with how these turned out. Hand painting is not my strong point. It's definitely something I'm going to work on practicing because I want to be able to share a lot more designs with you. But these brushes made it a lot easier because of how high quality the bristles are. They just work effortlessly. And that's the first coat of our design done. I worked quite thin with the black gel polish because that's again my personal preference and also because I'm not 100% confident when it comes to hand painting and I find if I do a thin coat of colour it's a lot easier to correct. So I'm then going to come in and add a couple of little dots and I will also touch up those leaves just to help make them pop. Now I'm doing the dots with the nail art brush, the detail brush sorry. Now I would normally do this with a dotting tool but I wanted to give it a go with the detailer brush so I'm holding the brush upright when I'm popping it into that gel polish and then holding it upright when I'm applying it to the nail and it created some super small dots which I felt like you have to have dots in an abstract design. I'm then like I said just going to touch up those leaves with a little bit more gel polish just to help make that black really pop and then I will pop this into cure and we'll be ready to top coat our design. So whilst you're watching this bit, I just wanted to say I really hope you'd all enjoyed watching. Thank you so much for the comments that you've been leaving on my videos. It's really appreciated. I'm quite new to doing videos for the Kiki London channel, but I'm absolutely loving doing them. And I'm loving sharing such good quality products with you all. As always, everything I've used, colours, brushes, lamps are all listed in the description box below. Here, I just wanted to touch a little bit on cleaning the brushes. So throughout the set, you would have seen me wipe them on a dry lint-free pad. I'm doing the same here. Now that I'm completely finished my design, wiping off all of that excess color. Now, you don't want to use too much alcohol on your bristles of your brushes too much because it will eventually dry them out. So I don't like to keep doing that through the set. I find it sufficient enough just wiping them on a dry brush. And then at the end, I'm going to wipe them on one of these Kiki London alcohol pads. And this will just remove all of that excess gel polish from your bristles. Now, you want to be really gentle when you're doing this. You don't want to over clean them because you will ruin them. So be really gentle, take care of them and they will last you, you such a long time. As I'm just pointing out here, a lot of your gel polish can collect up at the base of your bristles. So again, just be careful to clean around that. If you feel that you've got all of the gel polish out just rubbing them on a lint-free pad then you can skip this step of coming over with alcohol. Just check that they're fully cleaned before you use them in the next set especially if you've used a dark colour like black. Where these brushes have a lid you don't have to worry that if you do leave a small amount of gel polish on your bristles you haven't got to worry about them accidentally curing because the cap is protecting them. It will also protect them from dust and if you're mobile I would 100% always have brushes with lids on because they just get ruined otherwise. To finish off the design, I'm going to come in and top coat. I'll then pop this in to cure. And that, guys, is the end of the video. I really hope you enjoyed this demonstration of the brushes. If you did, then please do give it a thumbs up. And are you thinking of purchasing the collection yourself? If so, let me know in the comments below and let me know which brush you are most looking forward to trying. I can honestly say I highly recommend them. And as I said, all links will be below for you all to check out. 
once again thanks so much for watching you will be seeing me very soon with a set using these amazing brushes take care bye bye